Hi folks, this is George Hoffman, and uh, I'd like to invite you to come along with me while I do a photo restoration for a friend of mine. Uh, his wife, wife's dad is going to have his 80th birthday coming up in a few weeks, and he had this. she had this picture that she said, I wonder if uh, George can work on this for me and um, make a, maybe a 5 by 7 print of it for his birthday. And so he handed me this photograph, and I'll show it to you right here. It's torn in half, almost completely through. It's missing a corner, and it's pretty scarred up. But um, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it a try. And um, last time I did one of uh, these photo restorations for him, he said, i got to ask you, how, how did you do that? And I said, I really don't know. I don't remember all the little steps. And so I thought, well, it would be kind of fun to show him all the little steps on this one. I don't even know if this one's going to come out. I hope it does, um, but we'll see. And I'm going to bring you along with me on this journey. Uh, there's so many little tools and tricks and tips that come along the way doing photo restoration in Photoshop um, that uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So we'll see. He wants to possibly get a 5x7 that he can take to the birthday party in a few weeks. So um, anyway, thought I'd do this recording and and uh, show you how it works and show him how it works when I get done. And if it comes out, I'll, I'll actually show this to him. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get started here. And uh, I've taken this photograph and put it on a, my flatbed scanner. I've got an Epson 2400 scanner. Uh, I've also got a scanner on my all-in-one all -in printers, uh, but for this one I'm using my dedicated scanner. It's an old one, but it does a really good job. Uh, and the settings I'm using is 2400 DPI. Um, I'm detecting the, the, the item as I put it in there. I'm going to scan it to my Dropbox folder to 2017 Celine's Dad Restoration. Uh, in this case, I'm scanning to JPEG. Uh, I tried TIFF a little earlier, and the file size was a little bit too large for this video. So I'm going to use um, JPEG, and it works fine because I'm pretty much all in a black and white, or um, I'll be converting it all to black and white. And TIFFs are great because they have all the color information and more uh, more information that. Uh, un uncompressed information than JPEG, but for this particular restoration, it's going to be fine to use a, a JPEG, um, so we should be good. And so I'm going to scan it. I've already scanned it, so I'm going to go ahead and show you where it come, came out. I'm going to flip over here to my Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 2017, and I'm, I've got the photo, the photographer's package, which is the Photoshop and Lightroom package for $9.99 a month, so I really like that and I highly recommend it for anybody that is uh, interested in uh, getting into Photoshop. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month for both Photoshop and Lightroom, and I've got 25,000 some odd photographs in Lightroom. Uh, in between Lightroom and Photoshop, it's just about anything you'd ever need. Uh, as you can see, this photograph is uh, pretty bad. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, however, you'll, you'll probably be able to see, and this is my first look at it too, uh, you'll probably be able to see that there's, um, there's a fair amount of uh, detail um, that's in there, but there's also an awful lot of uh, stuff that uh, is not desirable. So uh, let me take a look closer, because I did a pretty, pretty detailed scan, and we'll just see how much... Uh, we can see, and actually we got a pretty good, uh, believe it or not, pretty good uh, view of his of his face. Um, I'm going to zoom in here, and that's actually something that uh, is better than some I've worked with, and worse than some that I've worked with. But um, we'll give it a shot, and I'm going to see how we do here. It looks like... Um, He's standing in front of a car. We might have to do a little reproducing of the pavement 
filling in the blanks on some of these holes so uh, let's get started um, <clears throat> first of all you'll see on the right hand side here there's a number of layers I'm I'm, I'm using a resolution in this to create a, a screen that you can see pretty easily on uh, in a in a when I render this to a, a video file so uh, it, I normally work on a, a really a lot larger scale so that things aren't quite as compressed as, as it shows here so um, but I've got to think a 1280 by 800 screen here that I'm going to be working with first thing I like to do is I like to color correct and the way I do that is I create a here's my background layer and I'm going to drag this down to my create new layer and it creates a duplicate layer which is going to be the layer that I'm going to be working on so everything I do in the future on this is going to be um, the, the base layer is going to be my background copy and my the background which is my original image is not going to ever be touched uh, so I now have a reference to be able to look at my before and after as I'm working and the first thing I do is I'll do a, a correction of the colors and the, uh, the levels and the way to do that with Photoshop is you can pick this little guy right here which is a set of um, layer styles that you can put on a layer above whatever you're working on so I'm going to change the levels and you'll see here that the there's an RGB slider and a lot of folks just grab this slider and they move stuff around and darken it's a pretty easy straightforward way to do it but uh, the, the uh, the way I do it is a little bit different and I think more accurate so this little box right here the RGB uh, box I'm going to slide down here to the red and I'm going to correct each of these colors individually so I'm going to co correct the red uh, this white here is pretty much going to be the white that you see around the edges so I'm going to go over here to the white that shows up not the edges but the main part of the picture and I'm going to change that to slide over to about right there and change my output levels and quite frankly I don't know all the details behind how this works <laughs> but it works and I took a course in how to do this and this is the recommended way to uh, change your color to color correct your your image and you'll start to see why when I wind up um, uh, correcting these these levels and these output You'll see here this changes, the output level changes, and whatever it's doing, it always seems to work. So I use this as my first tip on just about anything I'm doing for photo restoration. Sometimes I've got to make a few more adjustments, but once I get done, I've taken a lot of the cast out of the out of the photo, um, and uh, it looks a whole lot better darker the darks are darker the lights are just about right the whites you, know, you got some whites in here you got some blacks and you're in pretty good shape so this is what it looks like with the color correction this is what it looks like without it so it deepens it corrects the colors and so forth so the other thing I like to do is because the um, you see this discoloration through here and through here especially on a black and white photograph is I like to make it into a grayscale um, photo actually kind of a sepia tone photo if it's an older photo and so I'm going to create another layer and my layer this layer is going to be a hue saturation layer and the hue saturation layer you have the ability to colorize the whole photo so I'm going to colorize it and the slider values I like to use is 41 for the hue and I like to bring my saturation down to about 10 or 11 and sometimes I might lighten it up or darken it up a little bit but I kind of like the way it is now and so if I go back I've now taken out all that discoloration that was so distracting over here on the sides and now the whole photograph has that nice sepia tone to it that that people like and so if you go now I'll do a comparison
between those two and then with the two corrections I've got a, a pretty nice um, at least for from a color standpoint a pretty nice corrected photograph so next you see all of these bad marks all throughout here uh, all these uh, all this mess and uh, some of this when you look at it you go okay what's going on here uh, a lot of this is tears and breaks in the in the photograph and so there's gonna be a lot of tedious work um, to correct this the other thing I need to do is I'm going to crop it so I get rid of all this white around here um, so the way I do the cropping is a little different too uh, this is my crop tool and typically if you have a crop tool you'll see the square um, but in my case what I like to use is what they have is a pers the perspective crop tool and when I grab that I'm going to pull a square like you would normally do on any other crop but then the cool thing about this is each of these points you can grab and pull over to the corner where you want it to, to hold on to so if you have a little bit of an oblique photograph it's not quite square you grab those corners and get them right into the corner of wherever your photograph is whatever you're working on it could be a piece of artwork you're taking a picture on the wall you had to get a, a different angle in order for it to um, not have any glare uh, then you can use this tool to straighten it up so I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it to the corners where you can see it's right on the edge of the corner so now when I hit enter this one down here is a little bit a little bit off so I'm gonna move it up catch that corner now you can see it's not quite as square looking as it was but when I hit enter now boom it's going to square the picture up and it's going to be nicely cropped um, there's a little stuff going on here but we're gonna we'll fix that so that looks a lot better already so the, it's, it's, it's the rich color it's got a, a better crop uh, you've got a lot of stuff going on here a building going on over here it's, it reminds me of Manuel's Tavern <laughs> where I don't think that's Manuel's Tavern but uh, that's the same kind of poster that's on on Manuel's Tavern so I'm gonna start doing a little bit of uh, work and the, the way I'm gonna do that is to start with my healing brush okay so the first thing I want to do with my healing brush and with other some other tools is to uh, first want to make sure that his face is going to look okay when we get done with this because if I can if I do all the other work on this uh, picture and correct the big old tear on the lower left and I fix all the little rips but his face looks like the pits it's not going to be much of a restoration so I'm going to go and zoom in here all I'm doing is hitting command plus I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to see what his face looks like and you may say there's no way and I'm saying way <laughs> this is this is actually a pretty pretty good uh, um, piece of uh, um, content to work with and uh, you can you can see his actually it's, it's, you can see that the tears have distorted his face somewhat but um, I'm also going to show you how we can correct a lot of this so that he starts to look like a, a human being again and and, um, and uh, he looks like a very handsome young man so let's see what we can do here. I'm going to start off with with the uh, healing brush, and this is the tool that is extremely powerful. And we're going to just start to correct a few things. And all I'm going to do is actually I'm going to come down here and work on my background layer, and I'm going to start to clean this up. And you'll see when I start to paint over this, you'll see that's just too easy. That's just cheating or something because. You're not doing any work that's right that's the way it works 
my secrets out. Um, so I'm using a healing brush and Photoshop and Adobe have figured out how to do this. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And so now as I go over these unusual spots, Adobe's doing all the work. They're analyzing what in the world this thing probably looked like and they're using their technology to begin to um, analyze what the surrounding picture looks like and then clean it up based on that. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, but so far, so good. And um, it, we'll see how far we get without having to do anything any more strange than this. Sometimes it's uh, it'll make a it'll make a change that you go. That's not exactly what it should be doing. But so far, we're getting some pretty good, pretty clean, uh, pretty clean results. Uh, this tear here is problematic because it cuts right across his his mouth and this one right over here it makes you wonder what in the world was going on underneath here but I think uh, once we get into it we'll be able to figure it out and clean it up so I think we're gonna be okay when it comes to sometimes you have to stroke the correction in the direction of what was underneath it so that it kinda gets a hint as to what, it, what you're trying to match up and um, as you can see, it's already doing a good job of finding the, um, the corrections or, or analyzing what the corrections need to be. You'll see when you get in a situation right here, it finds stuff outside of the, the um, area that you're working on to make decisions about what it wants to do. Sometimes, especially if you're on the edge, I'll probably, if I go down here and try it here, it's going to pull some of that white over right here where it didn't need to. But still, it's pretty close. So I'm just going to keep on working on this and um, cleaning up some of these, these areas until I get to the point where I get to a better idea of how he looked for real. Here is there's so much damage that I'm probably eh, it's getting there. I'm probably gonna have to do a little what they what's called a clone stamp. And what that means is there's a little tool over here, and I hit the S on my keyboard to pull it up. But there's a stamp tool right here, and what that does is you pick you hit the Option key, you pick a spot. You see the little crosshairs pop up and the spot is the area that you want to clone. So I'm going to clone this area right here down here. And it gives you a little preview of what that might look like. And I'm just going to, let's see, it's got an opacity of 90% flow of 47. I'm going to increase that a bit, 80. And then what it's going to do is sample sample this area up here and then clone it down here not a hundred percent but to the point where it does a pretty good job of oh I'm in the wrong mode I'm, I was in color mode I need to go into the normal mode that gives me a, a harder clone so if I pick up here and I you know, reduce this opacity down about 50% and flow down to about 50% so it's not so stark. And as I start to draw in here, it's going to pick up this area of his face and rebuild it down here so that I can start to see what his face would look like. And now, now I'm over on this corner I'm going to change my focus to over here and then darken and lighten this area here till I get rid of that 
problem right through there and I'm starting to see a pretty good idea of what his face would have looked like. And then up here on his eye, I think I'll go back to my healing brush and I'm going to try to heal that little dot before I go in and correct his eye. And then it's going to pull back a little ways. We're starting to see his face, which is pretty cool. A lot of it, there's a lot of something going on. I'm not sure what it is here, but Photoshop is pretty smart. And so as I color this thing over, um, I'm going to draw back a little ways. We're starting to see him. He's starting to come out. And if you want to see what he would have looked like otherwise, there's the stuff that was on his face before. I'm taking the background copy here and I'm putting the little eyeball on and off so I can see what, what I've done so far. So far I've gotten a pretty good set of changes. Um, this little dark spot here bothers me. I'm not sure what that is I pull back I don't think it's supposed to be there I think it's uh, either damage or something yeah but I don't like it so I'm going to use my stamp tool I'm going to hit the S button and sample this area out here and I'm going to get rid of that little guy right there and I'm going to clean that up so it looks a little more natural. It's probably a little bit too stark. So I'll probably fuzz it up a little bit. I'll maybe put a little opacity, a little bit of a blur to it. So when I clean up the edges, it starts to look a little bit more blending in. That's pretty good. I like that. And then the same thing up here. This little button up on the top, which looked like he had a little mullet probably could be fixed. So I'm going to just clean that little guy right there up. And uh, I think what I'm finding just by doing this so far is that the work I'm going to do a little bit later to clean up the rest of the photo, I'm going to wind up with a pretty good picture of what what he looks like or what he looked like looks like in this picture. I can clean up some of these areas by just using the clone stamp and getting the area around his face. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll probably clean this up more, but I'm going to do it now just so I can see where the edge of his face might have been. I'm just painting in from my source right up above the uh, sky, and then now I'm kind of evening out the edge of his face and you can see a little bit better what it should have looked like or would have looked like originally so now as we pull back and we look at the before and after we're getting a lot better picture of what's what's going on so i'm going to take a break here and um, now that i know that his face is going to come out okay I can move forward. Okay, so now that I know that this is going to come out well, it's going to take a little bit more work on his face, obviously, but I know that the picture is going to come out, uh, and all I've got to do is clean up this this little distraction right through here, and maybe fix this little section right here. That's all I got to do. So, uh, but the main thing I was concerned about was can I get enough of his face, the detail in his face. I noticed there's a lot of little issues. For example, the sky is lighter here, and then for some reason when this tear happened through here, it darkened up this part of the sky. So now I've got a pretty good idea what I want to do. In this area over here, I've got a few things to correct. I've got this um, area on the car where there's a lot of damage that's happened, and of course this big chunk on the lower left hand side. I've got the pole that was cut off 
through here, which I can clone. And his shoe, he's got a pretty good bit of his shoes, so that'll be a good source. Um, one of the things I'll probably need to do is to come through here and do a fair amount of work on the sky because it's, uh, it's a pretty bad shape. Um, and there's a few pieces of discoloration all through here. Uh, the first thing I'll really want to do is to clean up this lower right hand side of the car or of the pavement because that'll become a source for uh, me to work in the left hand side of, of the, of the um, photo over here. So that's going to be a, my cleanup, initial cleanup is going to be that and to try to work through that. So, now that you've seen what I've been working on, uh, I've been using the clone stamp to be able to sample parts of his face and parts of the background and paint over areas that are damaged using that clone. And so, that's uh, the basic technique that I've been using. And, th and then I've been using the healing brush tool, which Photoshop has provided, which uh, magically takes uh, a, a paintbrush and as you paint over an area that has damage, Photoshop, uh, using its technology, will analyze the background, the colors, and so forth, and then make a good estimation of what it should have looked like or could have looked like. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and fast motion through uh, some of the restoration using those tools. And there'll be a couple places where I'll stop and go back to the live video when I do some, some cloning and some changes uh, uh, where I can uh, take pieces of the pavement, for example, from another photograph I've taken to reproduce it here and do some of those types of things. So I'm going to go ahead and fast motion through some of this now that you have the basic idea of how I'm using, using the clone stamp and the healing brush tool. Okay, so I've sped up the, uh, the video so that you can see what's going on. This is where I'm using the clone stamp as well as the healing brush to make a few adjustments and changes to his pants, to the bumper, some of the things that I can just go through and easily paint in and paint out. And at some point here I find uh, that I need to maybe clone the right side of his bumper. So the way I do that is I'm going to select a, the part of his bumper on the right here and I'm going to clone it to the left side of the car and reverse it so that it makes sense, it looks right, and looks in proportion. So I go to my uh, selection tool and I'm going to grab, grab the selection tool and I'm going to come down here and create an outline around the bumper right through here and it's going to create a selection and that selection is going to be what I'm going to, and I'm going to grab some of the bumper as well because it looks um, a lot better than the bumper on the left hand side. So once I've selected it, then I hit the command J to create a second layer uh, with the bumper on it. And I can grab that layer with my move tool and move it to the other side of the car, which is kind of cool. But you say, well, wait a minute, that's not going to help because the bumper is uh, not on the very end of the, of the little the little part there. It's not on the end. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform that, um, that piece of um, bumper and reverse it. And so what you'll see is that by grabbing a hold of it and then tra uh, using a transform, I can uh, I hit Command T for transform, and once you slide it across to the left, it actually reverses it. And I'm going to then put it in place, and then maybe make a little bit of an adjustment on the angle by the transform, and move the bumper out to just a, just a hair so it matches up on the car to be symmetrical with where the other bumper is, and. Um, it's a really nice way when you have something like this. You can grab something from one place and uh, clone it to the other side using a transform uh, and create a, a layer with just that little piece, which is what I did with that Command-J. It uh, gives me a second layer. But I don't want to keep that second layer uh, as a, another piece that I can 
get confused with. So my next step will be go to go to the um, layers palette and merge that layer with the car so that it becomes a part of the car. It becomes a part of the whole, whole drawing without having to worry about that layer getting lost and mixed up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the drawing and take about an hour's worth of restoration and compress it down to about five minutes and uh, walk you through um, what what I'm doing. Here I'm just using the clone stamp and copying the pavement over from the right side over to the left side. I'm also grabbing some of the sidewalk and the pole to try to simulate what the sidewalk would look like. There I just took the foot and did the same thing where I grabbed the left foot and put it on his right foot and reversed it so that it uh, pretty much looks like the same thing. But unfortunately he now looks like he's sitting on the hood of the car and he's floating in midair, which is not at all what I wanted. And I'm also not at all pleased with the, uh, the way the curb looks on the left and the way the pole comes down. But I'm not going to worry about that now because I just remembered a photograph that I took of my own street when I walked my dog. And it's got a pr really nice picture of a curb. And so um, I'm going back and forth here and looking at the scratches on the photograph. And, and one thing I find is that the, the clone stamp uh, really is a great tool for a lot of things, but the healing brush tool is pretty amazing. I'm going over the sky here, and you'll see that it's um, cleaning up pretty quickly a lot of these areas that are that are a mess. And the other thing I found is or find is the healing brush. When you see a scratch, it's particularly good if you just follow the scratch and um, go the direction of the scratch instead of crossing across the scratch. Uh, Photoshop does a really good job uh, of analyzing what's going on behind the scratch. So you'll see I'm just, now here I've got a lot of areas through the bumper where the healing brush is too fine and it picks up the wrong uh, textures and colors. So I'm actually using a paintbrush here and painting um, using the dark colors and changing my opacity. Um, here I've gone back and I'm using the healing brush to remove all these spots on his shirt and I'm noticing that his shirt is hard to differentiate from the sky. So what I've done is I've come in and I've looked at the sky and decided I'm going to make this a shirt just a tidbit uh, grayer than the sky and I'm lightening up the sky and darkening up his shirt trying to come up with some definition between the two. And it's coming out really nicely. The uh, the building on the right is uh, got a lot of scars on it and uh, the patterns on the sidewalk were a little bit too uh, symmetrical from the, the way I was using the clone stamp. Here in this on the bumper, uh, the bumper has definitely had some um, some areas where I had to go through and use both the healing brush and the clone stamp um, to be able to clean up some of the some of the bumper. So here I am working on that car, uh, on his pants. Primarily I'm using the brush tool to pick up color and texture and then paint in the shadows, paint in the highlights, go through just generally and uh, sharpen things up, make it look good before I get into the area around his fingers where there's going to be a lot of detail. So here I'm going in with a paintbrush and and getting kind of granular with the with his fingers, uh, trying to clean through the the web between his fingers. And uh, but so far the car is smoothing up really nicely. Uh, I found I was trying to figure out some of the textures and some some of the boundaries, and finally made some decisions about what was going on uh, with the car, uh, what was going on with his hand. So. Um, Generally speaking, at this point, I'm just using a paintbrush. I'm going back and forth with the paintbrush to uh, pick up the colors of his pants and painting them in between his fingers and then picking up the flesh from his hands and painting in the flesh on his fingers. And it's a little bit of a slow process, but uh, eventually it, they started looking really natural and I was really happy with the their results. And you'll see here that the same thing's going on 
uh, on both both sides. At first, it looked a little bit um, unnatural, and the more I work with it, darkened some of the knuckles and zoomed back in and out, and then take a, took a look at what was um, available. Uh, I was pretty pleased with the way it came out. At this point, I decided, you know, that curb really bothers me on the left-hand side, but it reminded me of this picture I took walking down my uh, subdivision on Morton Road and the, a curb that I had taken a picture of with a sidewalk. And there was a girl in front of me and I was walking my dog and I uh, snapped a, a shot of the street because I thought it was just such a neat, a neat picture. And as I thought about this uh, restoration, the part I didn't like about it was that unnatural looking sidewalk and curb. So I went into Lightroom and I found my found this image and um, uh, decided to grab a piece of it. And the way I did that was I took and went uh, Command Shift 4 and created uh, and grabbed the curb. And when I did, it created a screenshot of just that part uh, that you just saw. And now I've got a screenshot which I can then go in Photoshop and I can place that screenshot into my. Um, so I'm going back to Photoshop and I'm going to go a uh, file, place embedded. And I'm going to go find my screenshot, which is in Dropbox. <clears throat> and when I find the screenshot from the uh, curb that I had taken a picture of before, it's going to drop it down into a little spot on the uh, on the photo. And the, the difficult part is the resolution is going to be way different. <laughs> As you can see, it's a little tiny chunk of the picture. The resolution on the restoration is a lot higher, so I'm going to have to grab that little piece of road, and it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to transform it into the size I want, and I'm going to grab the far corner to the right, and I'm going to pull it across, and, and that will create a um, transformed You'll see in just a second when I get approximately the right size, and I'm going to pull it across one side, and then pull the other side across, and there comes my curb. And I'm going to try to line up the perspective on the curve to match the perspective on the photograph, uh, which came out really nicely. I thought it was great, but I couldn't see what was going on. But the layer that it's on, I can go over and I can create a transparent uh, transparency on it. And so I'm going over here and I'm going to hit uh, reduce my transparency so that you can start to see the picture below, uh, which is the picture of the restoration. So I'm going to move the curb over to be lined up and I'm going to change the perspective uh, by changing the, uh, the corners and transforming it down until it matches the approximate perspective of the uh, the restoration. It also brings in the texture of the sidewalk and the texture of the... Uh, so that looks pretty good, except for one problem is it's completely obliterating the, uh, the picture. <clears throat> So I'm going to go back and increase my opacity again, back to where it is, and I'm going to create what's called a layer mask, and the layer mask uh, will allow me to paint out the stuff there. There's my layer. You can see it popping up and down over top of the restoration. And so what I want to do is I want to make it visible, and when I do, uh, I'm going to create a layer mask so that I can paint out the parts that are covering up the car. And after I get it about where I want it, uh, then I'm going to make it visible, and I'm going to change the perspective just a tidbit so that the horizon line is about, about where it should be. And then I'm going to grab the, I'm going to go over and, and click the, the layer mask button on the, the menu to the lower right. 
and when I do, it's going to create a mask. Um, and right there, there's a layer. That's the layer with the the picture I brought over from Lightroom. And I'm going to grab the. I'm going to click on the layer mask icon right there. And when I do, it creates a little uh, mask. And the mask uh, uses we use a paintbrush, and the paintbrush is black. I, if you use black, it'll create a. If you can imagine a. Um, a frisket or a um, anyway you'll see what's <laughs> what it is I'm gonna take a paintbrush with black and I'm gonna paint on the layer mask and you'll see there's my brush and I'm gonna make the brush pretty big so I can paint out uh, and start to reveal the picture below and so um, there's my brush make sure the opacity is where I want it to be <clears throat> and then I'm going to um, begin to paint out as you'll see I'm painting out the <clears throat> the um, foreground layer which is the layer with the sidewalk that I just imported over from Lightroom using the screenshot and as I paint on the layer you see the layer uh, getting darker on the uh, where the paintbrush is creating a um, a black um, mask, which takes out the old picture and, and brings in the new the picture the restoration picture below. And the, really, the main thing I wanted to get was that perspective uh, curb looking thing and the um, the pavement. And I'm painting out now the um, the mask so that that picture I brought over from Lightroom, the screenshot, becomes um, goes away, and it's now is starting to look like it was originally there. And I also like where the pole was. I didn't like the way it was before, so I changed the pole to be back on the edge of the curb, which is where it normally would have been. And um, that uh, that's starting to look really nice. And he's starting to have a little presence. Uh, he's not standing as much <laughs> floating in midair. He's, uh, he's actually looking like he's uh, got some pavement around him. So <clears throat> it's a really nice technique to be able to pull in another image from, uh, especially the one that I had created uh, originally in black and white. I used uh, my iPhone to create, to take that picture. So, my next steps on this part is to come back in here and I'm going to clean up the mask, clean up the area through here, and start to create a, a bit of a, uh, a natural looking shadow underneath the car. And I'm going to use that by creating um, a, um, I'm going to uh, use what is a dodge and burn tool to create some darkness and some um, uh, texture and eventually using the, do <clears throat> the dodge tool and the uh, burn tool I can go back and forth and darken the layers and uh, and create it so I'm going to fast forward through this part to until uh, I get to the uh, finishing touches so to finish it up, what I decided to do was to do something similar where I grabbed a piece of the pavement on the right hand side and cloned it over to the left hand side. And so the, um, I create a second layer and you see I uh, grabbed the pavement to the left which looked really nice from the, from the piece that I had before and I cloned it and brought it over to the right so it made a much better surface for him to be standing on. I then did the same thing where I created a layer mask and I painted out the area where he was standing uh, and, and left the pavement uh, reproduced from the left side over on the right side. And then I used my darkening by using a dodge and burn tool that, to darken the pavement underneath uh, the car. Uh, that's the the burn tool just takes whatever the 
pigment is that you're working with, whether, whether it's color or black and white, and simply darkens it. It keeps all the detail. It's a great tool, especially for photo restoration. And you'll see that I can, I can change the opacity and darken, create some shadow. And now I'm starting to create the shadow under the car that allows it to look like it's got a presence. <clears throat> and I'll do the same thing under him. So he's casting a little bit of a shadow, uh, giving him some presence as well. And uh, it just really adds to the rest, adds to the, uh, the other, the other thing I, I'm going to do on this as I look at it is I, I like to vignette the picture, which means I'm just going to take and use that darkening tool uh, after I've done a little bit of detail work and I'm going to start to darken just the edges around the picture. And you'll see here I'm adding some darkening on the very edges of the picture, which gives it a little bit of a presence, a little bit of a focus so that your your edges aren't quite as stark and bright as they um, as they would be if you didn't have some kind of a um, so I'm going through and I'm cycling through to see what the changes are and what needs to be done to, to kind of clean things up. And I've put a little darkening around the edges, around the sky, around the building, and bringing it into the, uh, into the rest of the, the drawing. You'll notice also that it's not a perfect uh, cleanup. And the reason is, is that I didn't want this to look like uh, a painting or a pencil drawing. I want it to look like an old photograph. And the other thing is when this is printed at 5 by 7 which is what I was asked to do, um, really most of these details um, go away. They don't look bad at all. So here I'm cycling through all the changes that were made and showing the final details. So the restoration is completed. It did come out pretty well and I was very pleased. I was able to print these uh, on a archival printer with ar archival inks on archival paper and uh, made them made a set of five by seven prints. Uh, they uh, came out really nice and I was very pleased with the final product, especially considering the initial uh, condition of the photograph. The photograph literally was two inches by three inches. My, my restoration was printed at uh, five by seven, roughly. So I hope this uh, video um, was instructive and informative. And Russell, the next time I see you, you'll, I'll be able to say, here's how I did it. And you'll say, okay, that's, that's what I was wondering. Uh, because the last one I did for you, you were you were not able to, I was not able to explain it and um, I hope this uh, gives you a, a pretty good idea and I just want to thank you and Celine for allowing me the, the privilege of working on this uh, restoration of Celine's dad so I hope that you have a wonderful wonderful birthday party y'all have fun